Good day, everyone, and welcome to this presentation here at the ASAP Conference 2020. Would very much like to have been there live to interact with you all, but however, the joy of video production means that I can in a manner of speaking. Have you ever heard of the term ghost in the machine? With its roots found firmly in philosophy, science, and a term embedded into pop culture. The meaning of consciousness, or the mind, carried in a physical entity. Gilbert Ryle coined this term in 1949 with the concept of mind and wrote and published as a criticism to Descartes. The Cartesian dualism, where that fo idea focused on the human mind not being physical, that it exists independently of the brain. Ryle referred to this idea of the, as the ghost in the machine during his rebuttal. He firmly believed that consciousness, the mind, are very much dependent on the human brain. And the term ghost in the machine can also come to describe the supposed consciousness in a device that behaves as if it has a will of its own, independent of what the human operator wants the device to do. Another use is by computer programmers, who have appropriated the term ghost in the machine to explain when programs run contrary to their expectations. Famously, in 2017, the internet and legacy media were awash with stories of doomsday articles written by clickbait journalists. When Facebook ran an experiment with their internal team called FAIR, Facebook AI Research, and this had to be shut down, as the article said, and they went full Skynet prophecy. But the, expen the extent of the experiment was actually rather simple. They had two learning chatbots who interacted with each other in a customer and a business method, really. So one is simulated being a customer, one simulated being a business, and they just basically did a transaction. And they both communicated in English, and that's when it quickly degenerated into just simple gibberish. And you can see the ex entire extent of that uh, conversation right now. So there was no secret, more efficient language being generated here that only AI understands. It's simply that there was nothing conductive. The interaction was nothing scary, shocking, or even noteworthy. However, it was just simply a regular day and a regular science experiment, shutting down a chatbot when it stopped showing a reasonable outcome. That didn't stop the internet, though. So today, I would like to explore what happens in pop culture, technology, art, and the powerful intricacy of human storytelling come together to create exceptional experiences. Ghosts in the machine, compelling examples of unusual ghostly experiences to be found in the medium of interactive entertainment. Ghosts in oral tales, books, audio, film and TV series are pretty commonplace, as ghosts are an intrinsic part of human lore. The idea of surviving bodily death in a form that can still interact with the living or exert influence. Their role in many stories serves as a function and morality element. Prophets with imperative information to relay, perhaps friends and family sticking around. Ghost stories are found all around the world and they go back many millennia. The duality of life and death is thus more than just a philosophical discussion. The medium of video gaming and interactive experiences in relative terms is still very new. Yet today we've reached a technological point where the games can be visually as good as real life. Importantly, not every video game has to be, but what we have is the most richest environment where storytellers can share their ideas, and this is what happens when those ideas get inventively spooky. Let's define some boundaries and align our scope here. Titles where ghosts are not just generic enemy types, or a foe to easily overcome, or even spectral guides, but where their existence and presence is a mechanic fundamental to the experience or a really interesting concept. The year is 1993. Electronic Arts, prior to discovering what a microtransaction was, released The Haunting, starring Poltergeist to the Sega Mega Drive. You're a 90s rad teenage skateboarder sporting a mohawk and leather jacket who's died due to the poor manufacturing of a board, who takes his revenge against the slimy, evil, American-Italian Sardini family, the heads of that greedy manufacturing company. The gameplay sees you possessing spookums around their houses, triggering events to scare the family witness into leaving. You are completely invisible to the family, although the dog can sense you, but more than 400 objects are in the game that have the ability to be interacted with. Scaring each person results in them running out of the room and ectoplasm being produced, which you can then collect. Each member of the family having their own sanity meter, and with a mansion-like houses free to explore, the game lies somewhere between an action game and a simulation, and The Haunting received high accolades and praise on its initial release, 
and a re-release to the PlayStation Portable happened in 2006. It's dark, you're alone, and the presence of otherworldly phenomena intent on causing you harm surrounding you with no ability to fight back. Your only tool to bring these entities to be visible is a camera. We are of course talking about Fatal Frame, otherwise known as Project Zero, an atmospheric survival horror published by Koei Tecmo. First appeared in 2001 on the PlayStation 2 and has seen five mainline entries into the series. Set during 1980s Japan, in each iteration the characters use what is known as the Camera Obscura. Ghosts are not able to be seen by the player except via the Camera Obscura, which enables you to capture ghosts on film. Taking photographs allows the player to capture and pacify the spirits. Different ghostly behaviours can be observed, capturing the right moment, centering correctly at more challenging angles, and putting yourself potentially in more danger to enable the capturing of those photographs, causing more damage to the spectral adversaries until they are either released or subdued. Quantic Dream, led by David Cage, have an unusual array of titles in their lineage, pushing cinematic storytelling that seeks to ask deeper questions about the nature of reality, morals and decision making, tones of social commentary, or taking relatable characters who often are ordinary individuals and placing them in the Twilight Zone scenario where they are facing a fantastical situation out of their depths, exploring what it means to be human and making choices. We will focus on one title, Beyond Two Souls, and then tickle another as well. Beyond Two Souls premiered at the 2013 prestigious Tribeca Film Festival, marking only the second time in the film festival's history that they recognised a video game. Released then in 2013 to the PlayStation 3 as one of the major Twilight titles, and has since found footage on the PlayStation 4 and PC, Ellen Page and William Defoe take centre roles as Jody Holmes and Dr. Nathan Dawkins, an interactive drama and action adventure. Jody, one of two playable characters, the other is an incorporeal entity called Aiden, a soul spiritually linked to Jody since her birth. Jody expresses supernatural abilities due to her psychic link, and held at a research facility all of her life, whilst learning to control Aiden and understanding the powers they share together. Being trained as a potential field agent in a very MK Ultra CIA inspired way, Jody escapes to explore the real world, finding love, action, terror all the while on the run for the forces seeking to control her. Whilst in play you can switch freely between Jody and Aiden. Aiden being incorporeal with the ability to pass and move through walls, interact with objects and highlight things for Jody to do and use, albeit with a tether that limits distance. This optionally instead can be played simultaneously with another player as Aiden, using either another controller or a smartphone, breaking the barrier to accessibility and remarkable storytelling. In addition, Quantic Dream's first major title, The Nomad Soul, with the unique talents of David Bowie, with the futuristic Blade Runner-esque City of Omicron, with inspirations of Robocop and other 80s future movies. At the time of release in 2000, it was ambitious, a multi-genre game that broke the fourth wall very early, addressing you, the player, to help catch a serial killer, and he's lending you his body. So, as you come to learn the, as the apparent protagonist, Kale, can die. He, a form of a virtual reincarnation then takes place, as death is not permanent in this world, as you, the multi-dimensional spirit, are brought in to take control of anyone who touches that body, which opens up intriguing ideas for solving many of the game's elements. The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, released in 2009 for the Nintendo DS, Players find themselves a hundred years after the events of Phantom Hourglass. Link and Princess Zelda in Hyrule with a weirdly convoluted backstory with a spirit-powered rail system that had once existed that is now dilapidated, way back when when opposing forces between good and evil collided and the Demon King was defeated and buried under a tower and the good spirits then returned to the skies, leaving the people their technology. Clearly someone at Nintendo had been watching Ancient Aliens. Early in the game, Zelda is killed, and then becomes a spirit herself, who only Link can see. A very sassy Zelda now, 
Together with Link wants to reconnect the cities of Hyrule using this elaborate train network. In a series first, Zelda becomes controllable. She has the ability to possess enemies that allow puzzles to be completed and obstacles to be overcome. From Monolith Studios, published by Warner Brothers Interactive in the latter months of 2014, was a daring take into the ring-laden lands envisioned by J.R.R. Tolkien. Middle Earth, the shadow of Mordor. From death, a curse binds us together. Who are you? I shaped the history of Middle Earth. I crafted the rings of power. Calibrimbo. Taking an original story with the player assuming the role of Talion, a ranger of Gondor, during the 60 year period between the events of The Hobbit and the Fellowship of the Ring, guarding the Black Gates. Talion, as the opening chapters play out, your family is sacrificed by Urukai in the summoning of the wraith of the elf lord Calibrimbor, whose spirit then infuses with you. Talion and Calibrimbor, as a two, now set out to avenge the deaths of their respected loved ones. Players are given the open world of Mordor to explore and find adventure, riding great beasts and conquering towers, fighting foes and making enemies that will remember you, your ranger's skills and the spectral elvish abilities that increase through gameplay, completing tasks and finding collectibles. I bet you're too soft skinned in my pet crowd that rip off your crowd's jawbone. I bet you're three that he couldn't. Scott Cawthorn's Five Nights at Freddy's. Originally, you saw players taking on the role of a security guard tasked with overseeing a pizzeria during the night. A wacky horror featuring animatronic creatures possessed by murdered children whose spirits have returned to haunt the owner of the company. Jump scares are aplenty. As an employee, you must defend yourself in a static room, preventing the animatronics from entering using security doors and information being fed to you via camera feeds and phone calls. To survive Five Nights at Freddy's. Each night is successfully getting harder. A take on a horror tower defense and part memory test. As sequels and updates rolled out, the story became more and more elaborate with developing mechanics. Quirky 8 bit style mini games included from the second title as a test when you're attacked and die. With each sequel receiving less critical acclaim than the prior release, the title does have a cult following in the streaming community. Developed and published by Zoink Games in 2018 for the PlayStation VR and PC, sees you as the ghost giant, a protector of a very lonely young little boy called Louie who lives on a sunflower farm. You are invisible to all but him. You can explore his world reaching in to help solve puzzles with your size and abilities and experiencing a heartfelt story that has touched many. With a little help from a very big friend. But really... Who are you? You'll face all In a fun, tongue-in-cheek simulation, Two Point Hospital. Two Point Hospital sees players taking on the role of a hospital manager, charged with constructing and expanding on the facilities, with a variety of tasks to manage and maintain, building rooms and amenities, satisfying the hunger and thirst of patients and staff, the hiring of management of doctors, nurses and those who maintain the hospital. However, spookiness can set in to affect the player. When patients die, they sometimes return from the dead and become ghosts. They float around and disrupt the hospital's operation by terrorising employees and patients, causing general mischief. However, with a trusty handy vac and having some lessons from Luigi and Sam, Genesis can thankfully soak them up and dispose of them. Moon Eye Studios announced a Kickstarter project in 2016, Lost to Ember. Successful community fundraising led to its full development, and in November of 2019 saw its public release. Lost Ember sees the player as the role of a spirit from the Yorana people, a soul who had failed to reach their culture's afterlife, now reincarnated as a wolf. In covering the secrets of the fallen civilization and a world reclaimed by nature, Gameplay focuses on experience in this world and a story from a variety of interesting perspectives. 
the ability to possess different creatures, inhabiting the lush and beautiful environment at will. At launch, the ability to swim in the waters as a fish, roll in the grass as a wombat, fly in the clouds as a parrot, dig underground as a quirky mole, and even traverse the cliffs as a goat, you are free to explore the world as you please. Nintendo GameCube's launch title was not a Mario title, but a Luigi title, inspired by a tech demo for the capability of the Nintendo Cuboid console. Luigi's Mansion was born. Now getting a letter telling you you've won a mansion in a competition you never entered probably should have raised more questions than it did, but this is a video game. So Luigi finds the mansion to be haunted, Mario is missing. Thankfully, a crazy scientist who also happens to live in the mansion entrusts his inventions to you. A hoover called a poltergust and a Game Boy Horror. Now tackling the mansion, room by room, stunning ghosts with your torch beams before sucking them up into a vacuum bag on the hunt for ghosts, treasure and hidden items. As I said, this would be included. However, ghosts are nothing more than the generic enemy you come across on the way through. The, uh, the game has found itself to have a couple of sequels, and with that sprinkling of Nintendo magic that has helped it remain fresh and innovative. Our last honourable mention today goes to Moss. Moss has you in control of Quill, a sword-wielding mouse. While small is full of charm and character, environmental puzzles and actions are solved by you, the reader, as the game is presented as chapters of a grand book. Moss is like looking through the opening footnotes of an adventure within a grander adventure. Wind in the Willows meets Lord of the Rings. Now it misses out on the inclusion as it's not acknowledged what you are as the invisible force in Quill's adventure. A ghost, an elemental spirit, a god other than the reader. Now despite every so often catching a glimpse of yourself as a spectral form. So there we are. And I'm sure you're already thinking Wait, he missed one. He missed this. He missed that. You know what? I probably have. You know, if that's the case, make sure you write in those comments below, because I'm sure there's many more examples we can put down there in those comments and perhaps make a, a follow-up video to this in the future. Until then, I'm Define Christian, and I'll see you soon.